Hi right, everyone, hope everyone's had a good week. Um, so basically I'm just going through a few jobs that I've filmed throughout the week. Um, I've had a bit of a up and down week with regards to uh, the amount of breakdowns that I've had. It's been a lot more different types of jobs. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd go through a few things. So first off, just a quick rad valve change. Um, and then I want to talk about one uh, later on in the video, uh, which is one of them Potterton um, Baxi 105s or Potterton Pro Maxes, all that type of uh, thingy. There's a few things that I've realized worked out and it's starting to make sense in my head how it all works now. So when we get to that point, I'll chuck another bit in there. Right, so on this one you can see it's got F62 on there. Reset it, um, the boiler uh, does all its usual, then it goes to ignite or goes to the gas valve and it just locks straight out on F62. Um, I was about to do some electrical testing and I saw on the PCB, you can see that little burnt mark on there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change the PCB and hopefully it's that. I think usually F60, F60 codes are usually down to that, but we'll find out in a minute. All the cables, obviously the power's off. I've checked it. Just need to undo these three here and uh, swap it over. Right, so there we go. As you saw on that one, um, F62. Um, I was going to do some electrical tests and show you that, but it was literally just locking straight out every time it was trying to initiate the gas valve. Um, could see that visibly uh, burnt out section on there as well. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd just swap it out and uh, change it over. Um, obviously an easy job. Um, the only the bit of advice I can give you when you are doing a circuit board is turn the dials down to zero because when you get the new one, the, they have like a little recess in there. They, um, they It will help you slide it into place again. So put it all back to zero and the uh, on off switch, put that to off. Um, and then yeah, it should slide in a lot easier um, and then just replace it and then just do your checks after. So yeah, on to the next one. Everything's off. Seems to be getting jammed. Yeah. Lovely and smooth. So stick a new one on. Five pin. I think that's been left open. Yeah. Right, so that job there was just literally just um, a newly installed boiler last week. Um, you can see leaks underneath, uh, but as you saw, the filling loop was open, so yeah, sorted that out. And I think it was just finding any any way of getting out. But I tightened up all the joints on that filter and underneath the boiler, um, and it was all dry. So yeah, job done. Um, customers reporting that an unused bedroom, the radiator still passing. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap it over. I'm not even going to bother testing it. Uh, it's a combination boiler, so I'm literally just going to drop the pressure, swap it over. Job done. Uh, not like yesterday where I uh, jumped it on a lot on an open vent system. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to do that, just get it over and done with, 
and then I know then it's gonna be it's gonna be working. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So filters in a bit of a tight place. I'm gonna drain it down with this. Right, so as you as you saw downstairs, the filter was in a bit of a tricky location. Um, not tricky, just awkward to get to. So I just drained it out with my Hoover. Uh, now the pressure's out. Now I can just swap this over. Easier than yesterday's one. Just need to pop back upstairs, double check for any leaks. Seems to be okay. Um, so it's filled back up. I've got this off because it was passing. Um, so yeah, all good. One bit of advice: if you ever see a lock shield with a screw, like a flatted screw bit inside there, don't ever touch them because they'll leak. This filter was just from a job that was really dirty. I managed to get it working again, but yeah, the filter was bad. And uh, this one here was just a leak underneath a 937 valent. Right, so on this one, basically the uh, customer hadn't reported any, any pressure loss. And the time that they actually booked the appointment was about three or four weeks ago, which was when it was cold. Um, so they also said that the condense had frozen. Um, so it was down to, I think it was down to that the uh, condense had backed up into the boiler and then, and then flooded out um, because there was no other leaks on there. And obviously I've done the expansion vest. So that stopped very, very quickly. So I can guarantee that that expansion vessel is very full. Okay, so I'm going to do this ready to go. i my little kit. New one in. All good. Right, so with this boiler, um, I went there uh, on the first day um, with intermittent fault. Um, wasn't too sure what it was, um, but looking back at the previous um, like job sheets that had been left, um, it looked like it was an intermittent overheat. So somebody had changed the burner door um, and I went there again because it kept on happening every day. Um, so First thing I checked was the flu seal. Obviously that was gone. So took the flu seal out, changed that all over. Um, and then I, what I then noticed after, after that was that the PPMs were slightly high. I think around about 170 or 180. Um, so, uh, and the flame picture was a little bit yellow. So I wasn't, wasn't completely happy with that, to be honest. So uh, what I done it for that night, came back the following morning. Um, and what I wanted to do was try and get them readings back down again. So, um, one thing I did notice was that the um, the uh, the flame picture was yellow, um, and I hadn't been inside at this point. Um, so I ordered up a new burner, um, new insulation panels, um, and I knew I was going to clean up the sump. So I ordered up a new new sump seal as well. Um, so I ordered all that up, uh, went back the next day, done all that work, and then as you saw, as you see in the video, um, I get it back down to where it should be and a good flame picture. Very happy with with all of that side of things. Um, now, what I wanted to talk about is that with these boilers, um, the overheat, intermittent overheat. Now, what I've worked out is that there's got to be a seal that's leaking somewhere. So whether it's the sump seal, whether it's the burner door seal, um, or whether it's the flu seal um, leaking. And it, it, what happens is the heat builds up in there and then there's um, a, th um, a thermistor on the, on the fan. So then that trips out and then that locks it out. 
So that's one thing I've definitely noticed on them. So check one of them three things or do all three. Um, and then that kind of eliminates all the issues really. Um, so that's that's what I I ended up doing, was doing all, all, all of them really. And the burn had already been done. Um, and that solved the issue. I haven't heard anything since. And obviously the readings are way down back to where they should be. Um, so I'm happy to leave that boiler on and it's, you know, it's a good job all round. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, let everyone know that that's what I think happens. I hate these boilers. Came here um, because of um, intermittent issue. They wasn't sure what it is, but somebody's replaced the actual combustion box door and the electrodes. Um, but as you can see, the, the, the PPMs are really high, so I reckon what's probably doing is building up heat tripping out the overheat stack. Um, so yeah, I'll change that flu seal over. Yep, I would definitely say that, that flu seal is gone. Wow. Let's see how high we can get it. Well, I think we get the picture. Right, so the boiler's off. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change that flue seal. I'm just gonna take this flue out and then uh, replace that flue seal in there. Um, and then hopefully, easy peasy. I'm just wondering, just wondering where the seal is. It's meant to be blue. <laughs> just wondering if you can notice a difference. <laughs> just a bit different. But also, annoyingly, I have just noticed that this electrode was out as well, but I mean, I can't need that. Just give the old surface a little, little freshen up. That didn't look too good either. Right, so, you can see, burn is on. Blue seal, all zero, which is good. Give it another, another check for a couple of minutes, then I'll do the FJ reading to make sure they're all good. So this is only a short flue, literally only the length of my analyzer. So I'm just checking that seal um, down there on the flue elbow. Um, as you can see, it's at zero. Um, so right, so yes, sir, I came here. Um, overheat, intermittent overheat problem. So I've um, changed that flue seal in there and that seems to have solved it. Um, re putted up around, around the flue inside and outside um, because all it had before was a bit of silicone and a bit of tape around it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hoover up inside here, change the um, uh, insulation panels um, and uh, put a new burner in um, and hopefully that will solve the issue. So I think it's very clear to see the difference between the two. Um, so I'm going to put this all back in and I've just hoovered up inside um, and I'm going to scrape all these bits out, change them panels and hopefully that should uh, should be good. So yeah, lovely blue flame um, and that seems to have solved the issue. Um, so yeah, happy with that. Um, just if anybody does say anything, this is a brand new burn the door. Somebody else fitted this um, a few weeks ago. Um, so there's no cracks in there or anything like that. Anybody does try and say that, but yeah, so it seems to be all good. I'm happy with that plain picture. Um, obviously the readings will tell me different. Um, but yeah, we're looking about right, a lot less than yesterday. Um, so yeah, really happy. Absolutely spot on. Great plain picture. So I'll put the case on and carry on testing. Right, case back on, we're looking at for 9.0 plus or minus 1, so 